This video provides information that will enable students to complete task 1 and begin task 2 of the Year 12 Maths A Navigation Assignment. The Earth's magnetic north pole and true north are not the same position on the Earth's surface. True north is the northern location of the Earth's axis of spin, which is the basis for lines of latitude and longitude. On the other hand, magnetic north is the position on the Earth's surface of the north pole of the Earth's magnetic field and lies about 1500 kilometres away from the true north pole in the Arctic Ocean, north of Canada. Consequently, this means that depending on its position on the Earth's surface, the compass needle from a ship taking a bearing will not usually point to true north, but rather point to magnetic north. So, magnetic variation is the angle between true north and the direction of north as determined by a compass in a particular region and is given a direction of either east or west. The first diagram shows a variation to the east from true north to magnetic north and this variation is an angle of 30 degrees in the easterly direction. So if we were on a ship and wanting to take a bearing to a landmark say here, our needle would point to magnetic north and follow a clockwise direction to our object. The compass would read 45 degrees and we would write this as 0 45 degrees M or 0 45 degrees C meaning that our compass bearing was 45 degrees from magnetic north. The 45 degrees M or 45 degrees C are just two different ways of writing the same thing. The M stands for magnetic bearing and the C for compass bearing. If we wanted to know the true bearing of our object then we would measure from true north and it would be an angle again in a clockwise direction from true north to our object. The true bearing would be 0, 75 degrees true. So we can see that the difference between our compass bearing of 45 degrees and our true bearing of 75 degrees is the variation of 30 degrees. What's important to note here is that when our variation is to the east, our compass bearing is always less than our true bearing. And we have a little rhyme to help us remember this. Variation East Compass Least meaning that if we are in a region where the magnetic variation is to the east, then our compass bearing will always be less than our true bearing. In our second diagram, our variation is a, approximately 30 degrees west. That means it's 30 degrees from true north to magnetic north. And if we were taking a bearing to the same object in this reading, then our compass bearing would be from magnetic north, again in a clockwise direction, and we would read 70, 105 degrees 
m. So our magnetic bearing would be 105 degrees m. Remembering that the true bearing of this object was 0, 0,75 degrees true. So again, the difference between the magnetic bearing and the true bearing was our magnetic variation of 30 degrees west. So again, we can use our rhyme to help us remember this comparison. So variation west compass best. So this rhyme reminds us that if we are in a region where the magnetic variation is to the west, then our compass bearing will always be larger than the true bearing. The next slide shows us the compass rows found on the map of Hypothetical Bay, the map you are to use in your assignment. The compass rose reveals a number of things about the magnetic variation in this region. Firstly, zero degrees at the top of the compass rose indicates true north. Where the arrow is pointing will give us magnetic north. So we can see that the angle between true north and magnetic north, in other words the magnetic variation, is 8 degrees and it is to the east. This information is also confirmed to us by the information in the centre of the compass rows. So we can see that the magnetic variation is 8 degrees to the east. The compass rose also gives us information that the magnetic variation is constantly changing. This map was made in 1990 and as we can see the magnetic variation was 8 degrees east but the information on this side of the compass rose tells us that this variation is increasing 3 minutes annually. So a person using this map in 2010 would need to take this, this changing variation into account when they were taking their bearings. Task 1 requires you to work out the magnetic variation for the region in Hypothetical Bay for the year 2010. So to do this we need to uh, complete three steps. Step 1, you will need to calculate the difference in years between 1990 and 2010. Step 2 requires you to calculate the magnetic change. That means you will need to take the number of years found in Step 1 and multiply it by the annual change occurring each year. And this will be in minutes. So after you do this calculation, you will have an answer in minutes, uh, minutes east, and you can convert that into degrees east. So once you have that number in step two, you can now go to step three and determine the total change in the magnetic variation over that time. So to do this, simply add to the original eight degrees east the amount of change that occurred in step 2 and that will give you your new magnetic variation for the year 2010. Task 2 requires you to plot the course of the fishing boat. Before plotting the course each compass bearing needs to be converted to true bearing. The following table can assist you to do this. Remember our rhyme from a previous slide that when the variation 
his eight, the compass his leg. So remember this when you're converting your compass bearing to your true bearing in the region of hypothetical bay that has a variation to the east. So with this information, you'll now be able to complete task one and begin task two of your assignment. Good luck.